Every day, 2 million tons of pollutants are released into the world's water. In America, 40% of rivers and 46% of lakes are being polluted and considered unhealthy for swimming, fishing, or aquatic life. By 2025, it is approximated by food and water watch cities that around 3.5 billion people will face water shortage issues due mainly to water pollution. Current water pollution is an imminent issue and must be addressed on all levels. One of the closest bodies of water to the Twin Cities area is the Mississippi River. It is considered the second most polluted waterway in the United States. Construction is one of the largest contributors to water pollution with more water pollution incidents than any other industry. On the U of M campus alone, there are five to seven construction sites underway at any given time. There are many processes and possibilities for water pollution on construction sites. One of the most concerning contributors to water pollution are due to sediment runoff and wet materials. Wet materials, also referred to as sludge, are defined as materials such as concrete, concrete washout, mortar, paint, and stucco. The sludge is often managed in a specific washout area, but poor management can lead to sludge materials entering the soil or waterways, which then make their way into our underground water systems or directly into sewers, which then subsequently end up in the Mississippi River. This pollution can affect not only the clarity of water, but increase pH and cause various health problems that can damage neural cells, lead to skin irritation, and cause cancer. Additionally, pollution like sediment and sludge wind up in our ecosystems and cause many issues. Leaking is another issue faced by construction sites. Concrete trucks with residue, trucks utilizing diesel or other fuels, and even the various stocks of paint and stucco can break and leak due to weather conditions or construction behaviors. This is concerning due to the environment of the construction sites where soil is directly exposed to any spills or leaks. Petrol and engine oils tend to readily sink into soil, allowing for even more efficient transfers of toxic chemicals into water systems. Other construction materials such as wood, rebar, and insulation panels can result in small particle residues when excess materials are left unattended. Action is being taken on a federal level to reduce construction waste and stormwater pollution. The Clean Water Act, passed in 1972, is a federally regulated law that defines a standard for water streaming, acceptable levels of pollution, federal rule, and allowed stormwater permits required for all types of infrastructure. Construction sites are under strict regulations by the Department of Environmental Health and Safety, which enforces various guidelines for construction sites to follow. We were curious to see how the DEHS applies their regulations and specifically how the U of M deals with their construction sites. So we decided to meet with Julian Rantella, who works for the U of M's DEHS. A closer look was taken at Athletes Village, where we were introduced to a wide range of pollution prevention systems and methods. The various types of systems mandated by DEHS include perimeter control, inlet control, stockpile control, hazardous material control, slope control, and the appropriate time frames of construction. These various controls target the prevention of soil and sludge from leaving sites and entering into our stormwater systems. Entrances at construction sites are one of the most important points of perimeter control. Large gravel is layered on the ground to clean off and trap sediment and sludge off of tire wheels. This process prevents large quantities of dirt from leaving the site and entering directly into street stormwater drains. Biologs used for perimeter and slope control are long black bags stuffed with straw or other heavy biomaterials such as wood chips. These logs are placed along construction fences to block sediment from leaving the site and along hills and slopes to reduce the velocity of any moving sediment. Orange bags are used at the edge of storm drains to trap sediment and prevent them from going into the city water system. These orange bags require regular cleaning to prevent overflow. Silt fences are placed several feet into the ground so that they can withstand the force of water and sludge materials. They also provide perimeter control by acting as a drain strain for sediment that may be removed by rain or other weather and into drains. Containment units such as a Con-X are very important aspects of hazardous material control. These units are used to store toxic materials such as paint, fuel, stucco, metals, and various other materials that could result in the release of hazardous materials into stormwater. Staging sites provide a central place to store various non-toxic building materials while creating stable grounding for these materials. They are also covered to prevent runoff caused by weather. 
The various barriers to these regulations are the lack of individuals following through with these procedures and the secureness of the various perimeter controls. Even on the U of M campus, there were many sites and locations that needed repair and additional controls. We propose that metal stakes be utilized to stabilize these controls to ensure their function. Additionally, it is our responsibility to continue to let our representatives know of the importance of these regulations and need for even more stringent and rigorous regulations by the Department of Health and Safety. Our collective voices supporting acts like the Clean Water Act and other environmental safety regulations will allow for a more responsible and cleaner future.